Hello and welcome. Let's chat for a few minutes about the Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, which is the most recent book that I finished. And as usual, following this chat, I will touch base briefly on what I'm currently reading as well as chat a bit about what, what my tentative plans are for my next read. But back to the Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. This was originally published back in 1930. This is an American uh, hardball detective fiction by Dashiell Hammett, the first of the Dashiell Hammett novels that I've ever read. So this was the first for me. I actually wanted to read some hardball detective fiction in 2018, so I had a couple of selections on my priority reading list, and this was one of them. I read The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler earlier uh, this year. So the Maltese Falcon. I'm so glad to get this novel actually read. I wanted to read this for a very long, long time. This is a, you may probably know, may have heard, it's a very famous film considered by some to be the very first film noir, true film noir. So it's it's been, you know, it's really hard to talk about the book as opposed to the film because the film is so it's such a presence at least for me it's one of my favorite films you know I, years ago I, I, I there was a, uh, a a gay and lesbian film festival that explored how gays and lesbians were portrayed in classic movies classic American movies and the Maltese Falcon was the selection in, uh, in that festival so I've always kind of wanted to read the book because of course it doesn't come across the gay character in the book doesn't come across that that well in the book in the in the film version because um, it's not ever in the film actually ever uh, really even specified that this character is is gay but I'll talk about a bit more about that here in a bit but anyway yeah the Maltese Falcon so this is uh speaking of the film you know I I I it's when I do these chats, it's always really hard to determine like who's the audience, you know, how much should I give away? Because, you know, when the book was originally published, the film didn't exist yet. So when you read the book, what the whole mystery is about the Maltese Falcon is not readily known. You know, so if you're familiar with the film, of course, obviously, you know what it is that that they're that everybody's after, but I thought for this chat I would not really talk about that too much because I don't want to get you know give away any of the pleasure of that would be reading uh, that someone would get from reading the book that is not familiar with the book or the film at all and wanted to just pick up some hardball detective fiction and you know see where it took them so I don't want to give away too much about the plot so what I thought I'd do is kind of go through the main characters and sort of what the feel of the of the books about so the main characters the main character is actually Sam Spade a private detective in the film version this was this was uh, portrayed by Humphrey Bogart and I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a bit but um, yeah Sam Spade's a private detective this takes place in San Francisco so like I said it's published in 1930 so around that time time and then he meets right off the bat a client uh, some a woman who presents herself originally as Miss Wonderly uh, and later goes by the name Bridget O'Shaughnessy so that's uh, so starts out being his client then he's drawn into this world that Bridget O'Shaughnessy slash Miss Wonderly is part of um, and the other sort of people who are in her orbit are the, a character called Joel Cairo and then Mr. Gutman who is also known as the Fat Man and then there's his sort of lackey kind of guy that does things for him. His name is Wilmer. And then there are also a couple of cops because Sam Spade is this private detective in the hard-boiled genre where he is not quite... he is kind of an anti-hero um you know and I'll, I'll chat a bit a bit more about that here in a bit as well whenever I, I i wrap up sort of the plot but so he's sort of a, a streetwise um man who is very cynical uh, about the world and really doesn't trust anyone and i think is used to dealing with sort of the seedier side of life and so you know it seems like he his clients he's sort of a lot of his work seems to take him in this direction and so he is very suspicious of Miss Wonderly at first and then a whole series string of things ends up happening that he gets drawn into this um 
this sort of chase that these characters are on. These characters, Miss Wonderly, Bridget O'Shaughnessy, Joel Cairo, and the fat man, Mr. Gutman, the three main characters, are all after something. And they're really consumed by this search. And it, it, it's all about greed, basically. And they, um, they really... Um, they don't seem to they've lost any kind of any kind of moral compass that they may have had they have lost in the pursuit of this goal so that's sort of what we're drawn into you know and the interesting thing i think to me about about hard, the hardball detective fiction you know this is this only the second of the genre that i've ever read i read like i said the big sleep earlier this year by raymond chandler and they're very similar in some ways but they're very different in others the big sleep um I think that the character Sam Spade was a lot more morally ambivalent than the Raymond Chandler's Philip Marlowe uh, private detective. It seems to me like the the Sam Spade, Spade character really gets drawn into this uh, this uh, sort of plot that the other characters have, and uh, you know, really, you the reader is left with really not knowing. You know, I think it's really easy to call Philip Marlowe from the the Big Sleep, the Raymond Chandler novel, an antihero. But I don't even know that I would call the Sam Spade uh, character an antihero. He seems to be a really a flawed person. <laughs> you know, maybe not a bad person. Now, Miss Wonderly, Bridget O'Shaughnessy, she is bad, and she knows she's bad. You know, she she realizes that she is. She really cannot be trusted at all. There's another character that that's pretty prevalent in the in the book, and that is Sam Spade's secretary, and she is a person who's maybe mostly like the reader. So you know, who really wants the world to be better than maybe it is. So maybe that's what sort of we're we're being told is that you know she wants the care. She sees uh, in some of the characters she sees some goodness that that the that we come to find out you know might not actually be there so i just think that was a really cool atmosphere to get drawn into one other thing i thought about you know it does sort of get give you give the reader it takes the reader sort of into the seedier side of life in this era in san francisco but it's not really reality you know it's not really graphically based like we might a crime novel a crime detective novel today might be really realistic this is not so much based on realism of this sort of gritty underworld but we know it's there we don't see it explicitly but we know it's there. We feel it there, you know? So it's really an atmosphere that gets created that was that was really sort of cool to go in, you know, to explore and to, to, to go into. So, you know, I wanted to kind of touch base about the, um, I did kind of touch base about the difference between Sam Spade and Philip Marlowe. You know, the Philip Marlowe character um, had a certain nobility to him. I didn't get that so much from Sam Spade, you know, really. Uh, so it, I'll be interested to read some of the other, um, the other, uh, Dashiell Hammett uh, novels to see, you know, how, how else he writes. From what I read on the publication history, there's not, um, the other Sam Spade stories were stories in magazines. They, this, I think, from what I could tell, is the only novel of Sam Spade, although I think that some of the stories have been published as collections now. So, uh, you know, there's more uh, Sam Spade out there. But um, anyway, it was kind of cool to contrast those two uh, hard-boiled detectives, kind of from the classic uh, classic genre, uh, the Philip Marlowe from the Raymond Chandler's Philip Marlowe and Dashiell Hamlet's Sam Spade. So that was cool. Then, you know, about this character, this gay character that, that I mentioned earlier that was mentioned in this film festival that I was watching back a few years ago. The, the character actually is Joel Cairo in the, in the novel is, is, is very explicitly, you know, a gay character. In the film, this was not portrayed. So... It was there's there at the end of this edition that I read, there was some book club like questions, you know, like a book club could do, like ask ask the questions at the at the meeting or whatever. And one of the questions was about 
the character Joel Cairo and how he was presented because he was presented sort of as a stereotypical in a stereotypical gay way where he, you know, is um, sort of feminine and mincing and uh, wears too much cologne and stuff like this. And, you know, so it explores sort of why Dashiell Hammett, or this question is asking why Dashiell Hammett would, would put this character, would create this character as being gay, you know, in this era. You know, and I don't really know. Um, it's been kind of fun to think about. The character Joel Cairo has a sort of a relationship even that's portrayed in the book with another one of the characters, Wilmer, that I mentioned. Uh, that's sort of the uh, the go-to guy for the fat man. Um, you know, there's something, we don't really know the details of it, but we can tell that there is some sort of relationship there or some sort of uh, connection that, they've ha that they have or had. Um, so, you know, that was kind of interesting, I think, for, for the period. Um, and also in this context of hardball detective fiction and this um, this sort of noirish hardboiled story that's being told. So I thought that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I think that is, um, that's about all I wanted to say, I think about the story, you know, I did, I did also get this idea about the, that I mentioned about the secretary, um, being sort of like the reader who wants some of the characters to be better than they are. One of the detectives, Philip, Sam Spade, the Sam Spade character, has a difficult relationship with the actual police. Um, one, of the, one of the police officers really does not trust him at all and is constantly watching for him to mess up. So he's sort of one of the standard kind of hardball characters, right? But then one of the detectives is more like the secretary, where he is uh, sort of tries to give people the benefit of the doubt. So in the whole novel, there's only really two characters that give people the benefit of the doubt, and that's the secretary and one of the cops. So the rest of the characters do not give the benefit of the doubt to anyone. They're suspicious of everybody. They're sort of on the make. They're on the take. Um, it's just that side of life. But like I said, it's not a realistic portrayal, but it is a atmospheric portrayal of that side of life, which I thought was real cool. So I'll end the chat with that. Um, I am planning on reading some more Dashiell Hammett and some more Raymond Chandler. As it happens, I um, I wound up with a copy, a used copy. I went to a used book sale and found a copy of another uh, Dashiell Hammett novel that I can't think of the name of off, my, off the top of my head, but I'll be reading that coming up, so I'll do a chat on that once I get it read. But anyway, what I'm currently reading now is Chasing Zeus by by Tom Stone, A Journey Through Greece in the Footsteps of a God. This is part history, part travel log, part memoir, part mythology. Um, it's been really good. You know, it's really kind of a, a, a fun read. Um, I'm about maybe uh, more than a third of the way through, between a third and a half of the way through. And so, you know, it's really kind of cool. It's all around about Zeus, um, you know, the Greek god, ancient Greek god Zeus. And um, the author and his wife sort of do this tour of Greece around the different places that Zeus, um, you know, interacted, like where he did this or where he did that in, in, you know, the different myths. So it's been real cool. They're really kind of a fun read. What my plan next read is going to be, I don't really know yet. I'm tentatively going to read Delphi by Michael Stone. This is a biography of this place, Delphi, which was the center sort of of the ancient world. The subtitle is A History of the Center of the Ancient World. This was where the famous oracle, you know, the oracle of Delphi was. And But, you know, after reading Chasing Zeus, I might be a little, um, have a little bit of ancient Greek fatigue, Greece fatigue, if that turns out to be the case, I'm not quite sure what I'll read. But I think right now, uh, following the Chasing Zeus book, I thought this would be a good one. It's been on my priority reading list for 2018. So it might be good to follow, you know, right after uh, reading Ch Chasing Zeus, unless I'm a little tired at that point of um, ancient Greece. We shall see. But um, until next time, take care. Bye.